So we're back. I think this must be video number four at this point. If you've just entered this project, if you look in the description box below, there'll be an entire list of every one of the videos that are in this series um, for you to refer back and forth to or just stay enjoy the one we're doing. So in the last video, we did our, did our painty tissue papers. And I, did, I did a piece of gift wrap tissue. Um, I did some stamping with some of my foam stamps onto gift wrap tissue as well because I want it to be um, more transparent when I put it on. And we also did some onto Carnival, which is wet strength tissue paper um, for the project. Now, since I've done that video, I have um, gone through all the papers and I've selected what I think I want the final mass colour scheme to be. So as you'll know from the last video, I actually did a lot of different prints um, with the intention of honing them down. So the ones that I've stamped as the tribal markings are still as they were. I've kept all of them because I don't know which ones I'm going to use or which ones I'm not going to use. I'm leaning towards these, I must admit, the sort of Greek key sort of symbol. Um, as I'm going for like an Atlantis type theme with this, I think that's probably probably the one I'm going to lean to. Um, the gift wrap tissue paper is the softer of the tissue papers. This is probably going to be the one I'm going to need to use if I'm trying to get into really curved areas or very detailed areas. This is probably what I'm going to use. Um, it's probably not going to feature hugely but it'll be one of those things that I reach for. The papers I've decided upon, and this could still change as we go along, are these sort of papers. I like I liked the white bubble wrap. I love this pattern, like this piece here, I really like. Um, I quite like all of that one. I like some of this, not all that keen on that. Quite like bits of this. I kept this one in because I wanted the entire design to not just be this aqua sort of colour. So I kept this in because there are sections of this I might pull in. Same with this. I really quite like the vibrancy of some of this. And if it's all of a similar colour, it's going to look quite boring and I want bits to jump out. So again, nice areas, nice areas, love that area. I did keep some of the plane in because you need some places for the eye to rest. That decision will be made as we go along. I've left this piece in, although I think it's not going to be part of the project, but I won't know until we get there. This whole video is going to be about decisions and dilemmas, I think, because I'm going to start work on putting the tissue in. There's going to be other things I do in this video. There's another bit of that tissue. Um, however, I'm I'm really I'm not I'm not in as I don't think this is going to feature, but I might be wrong and I might pull something out of it. Really loved this. And I like that whole blend of greens through there. And I particularly like this. And I think this might become almost the featured part. Maybe more of the centre of the face and then the more intense colours go off to the side. Or the more intense colours will be in the centre and this will go off to the side. So that's a look at the papers we've got to work with. Now, there are a few dilemmas along the way that I have to decide on. So, this is the mask. I've given the mask two coats of white gesso, and I did that because I wanted to kind of even out the brown to white. I don't mind that that's slightly different because every inch of this is going to get covered with tissue. But as the transparency of the tissue um, is something we're working with, if I'd left these white and this craft brown, it would definitely have shown through in a way to even even the playing field out. Also, it gives me a better vision of everything. And then I gave everything a coating in clear gesso. Let's see if I can find it. This was the clear gesso I use. It's the one I prefer. It's got a grit to it. It's a textural gesso. And I even went over all of these pieces as well. Because I do know from working with air drying clay in the past, if you try and paint air drying clay without anything on it, sometimes it gets streaky and you have to do several layers before it actually takes on a good layer of colour. Um, by putting the clear gesso on top, it will just give the clay a bit of a tooth to grab to. 
So, um, so it's perfectly dry. This has been done now about a week. Eventually I will do the inside. I won't show you the inside finish because you're probably never gonna see it anyway. What I might do is once I finish the entire front, I might use the scraps just to collage on the inside, just to give it a bit of a theme. I don't intend showing you, but you never know, I may go back on that decision. Now, this is where some of the decisions have come in. I was thinking, okay, if I'm thinking Atlantis, I'm obviously thinking ocean. This is already saying to me Atlantis, um, and that's why I decided on it, because I wanted to do different sorts of masks, but this one just told me it was from Atlantis. However, what I've done is I've gone through my um, stash of moulds. I've got some silicone moulds, and I found these moulds. Um, because I knew I had them somewhere and they're shells and I thought you know what I might want to put shells in there just just maybe as an accent piece and here maybe is crying out for something maybe maybe down here or maybe over the ridge of the eye or something or even maybe something in there so what I did is I used the air drying clay and I'll show you how I did it in a moment and I molded out some of them not all of them I don't want all of them I did three of each style um even if it's just one little one tucked in amongst those pearl details, I think those will look lovely. Now, I've left them white or I made them in white because I've got a feeling, and this is another part of the dilemma, is I'm not sure what colour these are going to be, these detailed pieces. Now, for me, I always thought they were going to be copper or gold. Some of you suggested silver, but I think I would be unwise to paint them first. I think I need to come in get all the papers on there and then make the decision of those. Now it could be they stay white and I just pearlize them and then what I might do is with the clay shells that I've made maybe those will come silver or gold or copper or bronze or something and they will add a little more contrast and drama. So you can see where I'm at but firstly today we're going to start on one of the panels but before I do that let's show you really quickly how I did one of these. And I'm only doing this because there's bound to be someone out there who's going to say, Kerry, can you show us how you did the shells? Well, I'm going to show you now so you don't have to ask me. So we're working with the same air drying clay that we worked before. As you can see, I've got it in a plastic bag. I've got it wrapped in plastic wrap as well. And then I've got a damp cloth around it so it doesn't dry out because the clue is in the name, air drying clay. Now, if it's a good silicone mould, it's not going to grip onto whatever you put into it. However, just to err on the um, side of caution, I've got some corn flour, corn starch in here. You can also use talcum powder. Um, this corn starch is only ever used for my molds. And I've got just a fluffy makeup brush, can be any makeup brush you wish. And let's do, let's do this one here. And I just brush the cornstarch in, tap the excess out, and I literally just take a pinch of the clay. I roll it into a reasonable sized ball and I press it in with my thumb, uh, with my fingers. When I've got the excess, I'm going to press down firmly and swipe off the excess. I'm just going to work until that's relatively flat in there. I'll lift this up for you in a second. So as you can see, it's relatively flat to the top of the mould. One thing I would say, however, and this is what I did with the ones I've done, if it's flat, it's going to be harder to stick onto something. So I came in and I actually took a little bit more clay off this so that it was slightly concaved in the middle, in the centre. And I did that because then if I'm putting around a curved object, it won't look so flat. Now, it's up to you how concaved you make it. And then all I did was give it a bit of a wiggle and out pops a shell. I normally leave these for 24 hours to dry. They do dry reasonably quickly the thinner they are. And then the other ones I loved, I absolutely loved this one. And I love this spiral one. I think I like the spiral one because of the depth. Um, I will endeavour to put the links to these moulds um, in, in the description box if, however, they are still being sold. I mean, I've had these molds for some time now, so I need to double check with the company, which is 
Katie Sue designs. I mean, as you can see, this was 2017. So I just need to make sure that they still exist. So if you don't see the link in the description box, it could easily be that the mold no longer exists. So, but if you've got any other sort of mold, you could do it. I did toy around with the idea of using real seashells because I do have a bag of seashells that I purchased a long time ago when I was at a seaside resort thinking I might use them one day. There you go, just pop that one out. As you can see, I love that detail. That's going to be perfect for adding little bits of detail to our piece. So that's how I use those anyway. As I said, you could use real shells or you could use no shells at all. Um, just, just know that's options. So let me just quickly put this bit back in here. And then I think we need to start working on um, adding the collage papers to this. So bear with me a second. Right, back again. Everything's all wrapped up and put by now. Let's get rid of that because I don't need that anymore. Um, one of the things I might use, and again, I'm playing with ideas, letting them marinate and develop in my brain as I go along, is I went through my bead collection because I do make things like dangles for journals, and I found these wires in there. I have no idea how long I've had these. I'm, I must have bought these on the internet at some point. So I thought wires... I pulled out some some of these pearls and glass beads, um, pulled out some little gems as well. These are usually from recycled jewellery or um, bead making kits. As you can see, I've got a couple of jewellery jewellery kits here. Um, so I could make little clusters as well as the seashells. I'm not sure. At this point, I'm just pulling anything out that grabs my attention to give me options. So we'll see where we go. In my mind, I've got maybe there'll be like almost a wire nest of beads that can then have a shell in the middle of it. Or I don't know. We'll see where we go with that. Or we may never go anywhere with it. So let's bring back in the platform that I've been working on. Now, I know that I'm going to have some issues when I'm trying to use the tissue paper on here to get into areas like un under the pearls um here as well i'm not going to be able to get right in there with the tissue paper unless it's a really soft tissue paper so what i'm probably going to be ending up doing is i know the paints i used it could be if there's an area showing i might go in with a really small paintbrush and use the same paints because obviously i know what these are if i really need to i can look back at um video number three and have a look and see what they were and i can go in with paint or I could go in and put a grey in there or a darker colour just to shade them out even further. Not sure. Right. My intent is to do part of this mask with you. And then I'm going to complete all of the sticking of the tissue down um, off screen and come back and show you what it is. Purely because if I do this all on video, you are going to be so bored and I'm probably going to be so bored when I get to edit it. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with this piece because this piece calls to me. I was tempted to continue that down the nose, but I now don't think I am. I like, I like the flow of this, so I have to be a little bit aware of where things are going to go. Now, I am going to tear this by hand, and I do know that I'm not going to be able to put it on in large pieces. And the reason for that is there's lots and lots of curves in this. So what I need to do is it's literally going to be a system of collaging pieces. Right. So, and this is why I'm not going to do it all on video, guys, because it, it, believe me, it will just become a little mind numbingly boring. And as you know, I'm not one for speeding videos up. So if you do feel you want to speed stuff up, by all means, guys, go ahead, fast forward, watch it on double speed. Um, I will be talking, so I will sound like one of Al Alvin the Chipmunk if you speed it up. But I'm sure we can all deal with that. We'll have a good laugh at Kerry sounding like a chipmunk. Uh, I'm just trying to get this shape kind of marrying that shape. Now, I'm tearing because having a feathered edge 
is going to be far easier to deal with than actually using um, a pair of scissors and making a straight edge. So, and I can go in and I can add pieces. The trouble is that I'm not going to be able to um, tear it when it's wet with matte medium because that will just cause me more problems than not. But we'll see. We're, we're going along. So I think that's, that might be about where I want this. So, yes, this is going to be a long process. So make yourself a nice cup of coffee, guys. Let's settle in for the long haul, shall we? Well, as long as it's going to be anyway. Now, I'm using Liquitex Basics. Um, acrylic. You can use any clear medium that you wish to use. You can use any glue you wish to use as long as you know it's going to work. Now, this dinky little tube here is actually the remnants of one of these. I cut it down because I was coming to the end of it. So I've cut it down and all I've done is I put the base over the top. And so I've got that to dip into. I'm going to use, where am I? where's my brush? I'm going to use a flat brush because that'll give me more um, of a chisel effect to push things in. I'm also going to pull in a small pointier brush that I might be able to work with around the edges. So I'm just going to come in and I'm going to put this on. Now I'm going to make sure I really get down in that crease. Also, I'm going to make sure that I cover more than the area that it needs to be in just in case I have any overlap anywhere, then I know that it's got, got the medium in it. So basically the medium is becoming the glue. So I'm fairly confident it's gonna work because I've done this sort of thing before. So just coming in. So as it's in place, I'm gonna use the end of my brush to tuck this down and almost force it into the areas I need it to be forced into. Now, am I worrying about cracks and creases and crevices and things? No, I'm not. I know I'm not going to get rid of them all. When it comes to things like this, I'm going to have to come in. And at this point, I am going to use the scissors because I can't tear it in place in a way that's going to be easy to deal with. Now, anything that goes over the eye opening itself, I can deal with later. I mean, if I can wrap it around, I will. But as I said before, I'm not hugely worried. If I just keep packing that in there, that will give me a nice clean edge. I don't really want pieces lying over this because what it will do, it will when I paint that area, it's going to look really bad. So let's pull this in here. Let's flick that up a bit, bit more in there. I must admit, I'm really excited to share this project with you. Because, of course, I'm filming this all ahead of time. So you won't have seen this until all of the videos launch at one time. And none of you have an idea how this is going. Um, I've shared one or two images on on Facebook, but nothing, nothing 100 percent, nothing completed. I will not share any finished images until this video actually launch. Well, this series of um, launches. And as I said, I do not mind these little cracks and creases. However, what I'm going to do now is the areas I've just torn this away from this area here, I'm going to come in and see if I can lay in a piece that fits into there. Um, I'm not trying to marry the pattern up. I'm no intention of trying to marry the pattern up. I'm just trying to keep the group of colours the same. So hopefully you can see this. This is what's really tricky doing dimensional projects is first of all, getting my big fat head out the way. Secondly, being able to share with you a view that you can actually enjoy. And that bit there is going to annoy me. That's that pair of scissors gone. 
Just snip that bit off there. And this is what I was saying earlier on about I may have to come in and do some shading. But see, even without marrying the pattern up there, because it's of the same colour palette and pattern, it all, sh all goes really lovely in there. Bit of a damp cloth just to keep my brush tidy. Well, I'm liking that so far. This piece here isn't going to bother me because I'm going to do something about it in a minute. Right, where are those little pieces I was pulling away from things? Now, I've got these little pieces here. I can always use these to add into areas. And actually, I may well use a piece of this in there. Yes, I may very well do that. Um, I have found personally, if I've got areas like this that need um, working on, I, I am better if I do it as I see it. Because if I think, oh, I'll go back to that bit, I guarantee I will completely and utterly forget it. So I'm just going to wrap that around the inside. Now, the reason I'm able to play around brushing this considerably amount of time is because it's wet strength carnival tissue paper. If this was not wet strength carnival tissue paper, I would find that the gift wrap tissue paper would have torn by now and it would have fallen to pieces. Now, I'm not sure of alternatives to wet strength tissue paper um, because I've not done that sort of research. I think there are some people who have, but just not me. So I want to address this area here now. It's just, I just want to make sure that that whole curve is done in the same type of colour scheme. Actually, that might work well in there. So don't throw your scraps in the bin, guys. I know that seems like a really tiny little bit of a scrap, but as you can see, it's probably going to be the perfect scrap for in here. I don't mind that coming over there. And then as you finish an area, or as I finish an area, I tend to clean up all of the stuff that I've been painting over the edges of, because if I don't, I could end up with lumpy, bumpy pieces that then cause me problems later on. Okay, that's nice, I like that. Right, now, I like that color and I think I want to bring this down here. Now I've ended up getting into the yellows there, which is fine, but that means I've got to work with this area of the yellows. Let's take that out of the way. And I've also got this area of the yellows as well. I wonder, that looks like I might be able to I don't want that straight edge and I don't mean the straight edge of the paper I mean the straight edge of the stencil which has been painted so this is let's see um, I would imagine this is video number four I'd like to think I'm going to be able to finish this by video number five but I have no real idea whether that's practical or not. Actually, that needs to be across there. There's a diagonal. And as I say a hundred times before, trust the process, because it could be that after this is on, I then come in with more acrylic paints and actually blend some of the edges together. All of these things are things that are available to you if you choose to do them. So let's just slide that in there. I do look for things like that. There's, you can see it, there's a line in this piece and a line in that piece which I can line up. So I've, I've played with that and I've made sure I've done my best to line those up. I didn't put any up there. Oops. 
Now, I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing with the lips on this. So what I'm going to do is I am going to work tissue into that area. I'm trying to tear it this time. Um, into that area. However, there's a good chance that I may do something different with the lips, as in I might paint them. Um, I don't know. It's... It's undecided. This is art. Art art evolves. Right. Okay, I'm happy with that join. Happy where that's going. I'll try to keep this in view for you and view for me. Right, and this is the piece I took off, so I know it's possibly going to work if I use it to fill in this gap here. because it's all within the same colour scheme. And this is why I like to work on the pieces as, as I see them evolving, so I don't lose track of where things this will go. I think that might work really nicely around there. I was actually watching a video today. Because um, I, wa I watch lots of YouTube. I don't really watch TV, but I do watch YouTube. And I was watching this guy um, and he was creating an elven helmet, like a helmet for an elf, um, out of leather. And it was fascinating, absolutely fascinating. And I was like, oh, my word. And it's all of a sudden I'm going, oh, I could have a go at that. And I thought, no, Kerry, you have enough hobbies and pastimes and art, art genres you like working with. Let's not add tether leather tooling to it. But it was it was an amazing make. At the end of it, I just looked at it and went, oh my God, that looks like beat metal. So, right. Maybe I want that to come around. I think I want to bring that around there. Right, so we're still in the this sort of area of the paper. So I'm going to remove this piece here that's got this straight line from the gel printing. I will keep it though because there may come pieces that I actually want to use a straight line on. I'm going to put it to one side there. So I quite like the idea that that would kind of I just tidy that little bit up there. I might be able to get it in under these pearls which is which was one of my concerns as I said that I wasn't going to be able to get stuff in there. Right, that needs to come off. Um, it's worth noting here that wet strength tissue paper, and I believe this is whether it's carnival or not carnival, um, does not like to tear. Oh, well, that's a lie. It likes tearing in one direction. It doesn't like tearing in the other direction. So you'll find you can tear a straight line on one piece, but you can't do it on the other. I'm struggling because I want this to go more of that shape. Maybe I can try and deal with this. Maybe we'll have to do just a little bit of patching up of the collage work. So again, I put plenty of matte medium on. I would rather have matte medium on it and then know that it's never going to come off than try and skimp and save on the matte medium and later on have issues. Now, once this mask is completely finished, I am likely to glaze it, I'm likely to varnish it, I'm, I'm going to do stuff to it to seal it. So I know that it's going to be okay eventually. So working that in. Now, as the wet strength tissue paper gets moist, should we say, or softened, it will soften back a bit. OK, it's not like it's resistant to blending. It just it becomes a little more pliable when there's moisture involved. So now what I'm going to do is where this is here, I might as well not cut that off. I might as well just work that around the corner. Because why not? As I said, I'm going to be putting it on the inside anyway, just because I like the inside of the mask to look as beautiful as the outside. 
should anyone ever lift it up and look on the inside, which I, I hope that's not because it's fallen off the wall. So I've got that little bit in there to do. Um, that piece might do. And I know you're going, good grief, that, how small is that bit? It's, it's the piece that needs to go there. That's all I can say. It's like, I, you would think, oh, I can cover bigger areas. Yeah, you can, but you're not going to get pieces that mould around all these sections. I felt quite pleased with the way that's going into the, into the edges, actually, around here. Because that does mean that painting is going to be easier. Now, I do have an area here that also needs a bit of attention. Let's see if I can find... Oh, wait, there's that little bit I just pulled off. I think that could be the very piece. I think the collage gods are on my side. Yes. There you go. That's just giving me a clean line. Now, when it comes to painting whatever I paint on these detailed pieces, I am going to struggle slightly because I'm going to have to get all the way around and under all of this to make sure that there's no white showing. But, you know, that's a problem for another day. Right now, do I want to? I think I do. Sorry, I didn't finish that sentence, did I? I think I want this to come up over here. I wasn't intended to go all the way up there, but I, I feel it, it can't stop just blunt like that. Right, if I take this straight edge off here again. And then this area here may transition into another colour. medium right inside there. Okay, I'm happy with that. Let's just turn the corner here. I'm still in shot. I'm still in shot. Okay, I'm liking where that's going. Part of me feels it does need to come down here, though it seems a bit... I don't like the fact that it's very symmetrical here. Maybe it does need to come over here slightly. So I don't mind this being like this, because as I said, I may start transitioning into another colour that will work its way up there. I need to think about this here. Now, we have gone down to the yellows, and I wouldn't mind bringing it back a little bit to more of the aqua colours. give that a bit of a tear and I'm tearing it because I know I'm going to go around two opposite curves it will give me a join here that doesn't bother me that much I'm just going to tear a little bit extra off but I think I will now let's see is that it feels like it might be a bit too much let's curve that round Right. Now, one thing you will find if you do something like this, um, and it's a dimensional piece like this, is your biggest problem is going to be, how am I going to hold the thing while I'm working on? As you can see, I'm, I'm kind of gripping areas that are dry. If you were to do this all in one go, you're going to end up having problems because there's nowhere to grip. Once I stop filming and I actually go to do complete the rest of the covering here I am definitely definitely going to be 
um, giving myself a bit of a rest break so things can dry. I'll come over the lip. There's that piece there. So I need a bit of glue there. It made a... This feels like it's a little bit of a tear needed. Tearing will give you a more natural join um, in that you won't, it'll feather itself into the next piece. Cutting it with the scissors will not give you the same effect. Um, although you've seen me cut it with the scissors, a lot of that is just down to pure convenience on my, beh my behalf. But my aim isn't to get wrinkle-free coverage. I mean, if I wanted wrinkle-free, I would have to paint this or do very, very small pieces of um, tissue. In shot, almost in shot. Sorry, guys, I'm trying to... I pulled the iPad down lower so you can see better. But inadvertently, it means I can't see better. Sometimes the best tools are the ones you were born with. Now I do feel that's then generated another line there, which I'm now going to go back with a bit of the yellow that I still have some of to blend the two together. just doesn't like to tear in the direction you want it. And anyone who's about to say to me in the comments, well, if you wet the tissue with a paintbrush, you can tear it easily. Um, the clue is in the name, wet strength tissue. The, the wet brush technique will not work on wet strength tissue because it's going against the nature of what the wet, ten, wet strength tissue was actually manufactured for. Right, I quite like that, but I'd like to bring this, can you see that, this round here, just ever so slightly, with that green colour once again. Not the green colour, the yellow colour. It could just be that, that little bit there will just be the right piece. This was also another reason why I didn't plan the look of this, because, oh, that was a fluke, it matches up there. Slide it down, it looked as if it was meant to be. Um, I didn't plan the look of this mask because it will evolve. I mean, I know we all use the word it got um, organic and things like that, but this is actually what this is. It will develop as it goes along. So as you can see, this is this is what I'm going to have to be working with. Um, let's put the brush down a minute so I can just see where we're at. Okay, we're already at 40 minutes here. Um, at this point, let's put the glue out of the way. At this point, this is where I'm at. Now you can see the fiddly bits I'm going to have to do. I think it's possibly worth looking to see what colours I'll put where and then I'm going to basically um, say we're done and I will come back when it's all collage because you can see the trickiness of actually trying to collage on screen um, with a dimensional project. I'm on my own here. I can't get someone to hand hold a camera for me. So that's why I'm a bit reticent about doing what I'm doing for the whole video. But I think what we can do is we can think about the color schemes here. The more I look at this, the more it's not going on there. I really do like this and this. And I think I'd quite like that up there. So I'm going to put that into 
that quadrant of my workspace. I quite liked this. And it might actually go in this area. But this is now looking less likely to be used. And I need to think about up there. Now, I, I did quite like the idea of this section. So I think that's going to go up there. And then I've got this, which is the softer one I can use for any really fiddly bits. As far as the other eye goes. So that that's that section. That's actually that, that's a. I quite like the intensity of that blue. Maybe this will become one eye and then come down here and then it'll blend into that. And I, I've always got this other piece of green here as well that I might pull in. So I think I'm going to pause you guys. Um, it's going to be two seconds for you. It's probably going to be a couple of hours for me to finish this whole collage section and then I'll come back to you and we'll take a look at what I achieved and then we'll make some decisions as to how we move forward to the next stage. So forgive me for not, not sharing the whole process with you, but incredibly time consuming, as you can imagine, and it's going to be a struggle to do it on video. So I will see you in two seconds. And I'm back. And can I just say I'm so pleased I didn't plan to video this section because this took me almost three hours to do. Now, granted, I did the inside as well, but I did inside and just I did it in big pieces, the bit that had all the uh, bubble wrap on it. So the inside is done now. I hadn't planned to do it, but I thought as I got the matte medium on the go and I had all the scraps of the tissue, why not? Let's move that out of the way for a second. So let's take a bit of a look. So what I've done is I've covered every section of it, as you can see. I did come in with a bit of bubble wrap and just do the very smallest bit around here as if it was the illusion of sea foam. Also, it connected the inside to the outside. Not that I think you're ever going to see that. Um, I did concentrate on trying to do strips. And what I was trying to do was I was thinking more like the green was kelp waving in the ocean. I did put that intense piece of dark blue in there and I really like that. Um, I put the yellow down here covering up what I'd done before because once I'd done this section, I needed to balance it. This section is actually balanced by this section. And I did a little work around here with some placement of um, little pieces that just felt right. This was really tricky to do this, trying to get trying to get that stripe up there. But anyway, so just so you know, this is all that's left of the pieces. And believe me, I was working with pieces this small and smaller towards the end, which is why it took nearly three hours to do it. I'm, it, it's wonderful. And I know that once it's completely finished and I put on a satin varnish and we'll do all that in the in the next video, then I know this is all going to become even more vibrant. But we have decisions to make now and I've already made some. OK, remember these, the tribal marks? And I was thinking maybe I will add tribal marks on here. I think they're all too big. Um, and also there's no black on here and I'm not sure I want to add black to this. Um, add would, adding black would give a real punch of drama. But I'm trying to think this is supposed to be Atlantis. This is supposed to be female. I'm not 100% certain black is the right colour. So I'm parking this idea. OK, right. Um, let's talk about a couple of other things because there's things I'm going to have to do without you watching because they're just too small and time consuming. OK, remember these, all these little shells. Now, all of these are really nice and dry. And what I'm going to do is off screen, I'm going to paint them all. I'm not going to paint them realistically. I bought these oh, several months ago, these um, shuttle art paints, and I haven't used them. Well, have I used them? I might have used one of them, but purely because I'm hanging on to them because I want to do a bit of a review or even a bit of an experiment with them because I love the results others are getting with them. And what I've done is, as with everything, I swatch everything. This is my swatch book. And in here, let's take that out because I don't need that anymore. I swatched them on both black and white. 
and I do that with things that are like iridescent or metallic purely so I can see what they look like. Now I'm going to forget about the black because I'm not using black. However, I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to select colours from in here. Let's just call them pretty colours. And I'm going to paint all of these shells. Not realistically, they'll just be a solid colour of, say, that or solid colour of that. Because I've got plans for those and I still think it's going to work. So I'm going to use these on there. So that's something I'm going to do without you watching. Because talk about paint drying. It's going to be really boring drying paint. So I'm going to let those be and I will deal with those again and come back in the next video. Now, I did say I was toying with an idea of things to do here. So I had a bit of a play and I started making these little things. Now, I, I will show you how to do these. They're, they're dead easy. Um, show you how to do these because I was thinking if I've got a cluster of shells and these are up against it, it would give a really delicate view to it. Also, if I use crystals or I use some of these like metallic pearls and some of these green pearls in here, it would really give me some dimension and it would take this to more of an elaborate layer. Um, and what I'm thinking of doing, let's put this back over here, is I am thinking of building an area here with the shells and the pearls and stuff with the wires so that will have an accent piece and because I'm me I want to balance it and then there'll probably be a smaller piece of it down here as well just that's balanced and that will add the really elaborate ornate piece to it but I do have one more decision to make and it's the white bits now the white bits are, were never going to be staying white they were always going to be painted I thought long and hard well I've been doing this mask now for over a week um, and every time I walk into the studio, I look at it and go, right, what will I do? I toyed with the idea of black for all of these. Yes, it would make it incredibly dramatic, but it's the wrong feel. I then looked at, I have this Pebio 360, which is an iridescent blue black. And I thought maybe, so again, pulled out my swatch book. If I can find, I've marked them all, so it won't take me that long to find them. If I can find them at all. Right, there it is. So that's the iridescent blue-black. Now, it's got a really nice shine to it, but it is a semi-transparent, so I'm going to have to do at least two or three colours, um, coatings of it. And to be honest, I am I love it, but I think it's too samey-samey as the eye. So I've sort of ditched that idea. And then I've always thought I wanted gold, and I tried looking at these two golds. If I remember right, these are the golds. No, they're not. Right. 350, which is 350. OK, this is the Pebio one, um, which is a nice coverage. But I do know this is also a semi-transparent and I know it's going to take a few coatings. Not that I have a problem with a few coatings of paint. The other gold is the Amsterdam one, which is it says it's semi-transparent, but I got a better. Oh, sorry. got a better coating out of that one. Hopefully I was in shot for that. Um, however, I think I've settled on the copper. Look at the richness of that. And I think that against there, it'll bring all of the warmth out of the yellow. Um, yellow and blue and purples are, are complementary to each other on the colour wheel. Um, and I think that's going to play to my strength. Also, yellow is in the green, and so is blue in the green. And if I'm treating this as is, I just think this is the right colour. So, right, I think what we're going to do is we're going to be brave, because there's no testing here. It's going to go right on. I'm going to go on, and I'm going to paint some onto here, and I'm going to do a strip of this just so we can see what it looks like. So, have I got a palette or anything? Have I got a palette? Mm, I've got a small ceramic tile. I use ceramic tiles a lot for stuff like this. So I'm going to use it directly out of the tube. I'm not going to water it down. I am going to pull this bit of gunk off the top though. So, because I know if I use it directly out of the tube, it's going to give me the look I'm going for. Um, I wonder whether I should use a flat brush. 
Yeah, maybe I'll use a flat brush for this and then I'll use a rounded brush to go around the edges because in here is going to be really difficult to do because, of course, there's nothing concealing that line. I've got to make sure it's absolutely a good line. Right, bravery, bravery. So I can tell already this is going to take... My fingers are covered in paint already. Let's get that off there. This is going to take two coatings. However, I do believe it's the right colour. I mean, look at that. That's. I want to make sure I don't go over the edge and get on my paper because I don't know how I deal with that. See, that's that's going to look wonderful in there. So I think that's that's pretty much where I'm going to leave you until video number five. But you can see then how this is going to really. I think that's going to really work well in my favour. And then we're going to have the other shiny colours of the shells and the wires and stuff like that. I don't have any copper coloured wires in here, but I think all of the colours I've chosen can be pulled out of this colours. So I think it's going to all tie together well. And some of the paler colours I've got beads for. So I'm going to leave this here. I'm going to get on and paint this entire copper section and then when we come back in video five we'll actually then do all the pretty stuff we'll finish up the pieces on here we'll put the shells in i'll show you how i'm going to glue them all into place um i will probably then come in and i'm going to be using um satin varnish by liquitex which is what i seal a lot of my um, acrylic work with and we'll probably do a section of this I would naturally use a spray but if I'm putting jewels and gems on I don't think I want to do that because then the spray will go over the top of any glass or crystals and I don't want to lose their shine so it's going to be a hand painting job for all of this so guys I will see you in section five I hope you enjoy this I'm certainly having fun with it